Good morning. Excited to be here on this April the 11th, 2017. Good to see you, Austin. Got to get over there and get one of your CDs soon. Hi, Debbie. So happy you guys joined this morning. We're reading in Joshua chapters 3 through 4 on April 11th, 2017. And um, as we know, uh, Moses has passed away and um, God buried him. And we just have had a wonderful time reading about Moses this year. And God's really spoke to us deeply um, through all of the readings on Moses and the Israelites. And so here we are. Joshua has taken over. Um, Moses is designated and has prayed and sent out Joshua to be his replacement to go ahead and lead the people over into the promised land. And in today's reading, um, they're crossing over. Um, the whole reading today is about them crossing over. They, so here they are. You know, they're right there at the river. And remember, God brought Moses up to the mountains and, and told him to look. In yesterday's reading, he told him to look out so he could see it, but he wasn't going to get to go. And we talked about how content Moses was in that. You know, he was satisfied. Um, and so um, even though he didn't get to go across, he was satisfied and he was content. And such a message for me in that, such a message for me in that yesterday. And then today... <laughs> I was talking to my husband a little bit about um, today's reading and what I was going to say, and my husband just kind of started talking to me and recounting what we'd read, and and bam, bam, God, God just, I hope I can do justice to what the good Lord spoke to me about this. So here Joshua is has been seen for all of these years, over 40 years, as the second in command. I'm sure he was younger. Um, you know how it is to talk about younger. There's my son, uh, you know, my younger son. And, you know, our kids, we, we, we start off that they're, they're dependent on us. They, they depend on us for food and water and for love and <clears throat> shelter. And then they grow up and um, they end up being smarter than us and more everything than us. I mean, it's the next generation. They're, they carry on and, and they end up doing greater and greater things. Um, than what we've ever thought about doing. And so here we are, Josh was brand new. You know, he, this, this is his first um, dealings uh, without Moses. And uh, I love what God did here. And, and you know, this story doesn't get the attention that the other story gets. The um, other story about parting the Red Sea, they make movies over it and we talk about it and all you got to mention it and anybody in the world will know what the story about the Red Sea is, but, you know, God parted the Jordan um, as well. And it was on Joshua's command. I mean, God was leading Joshua. And um, uh, <laughs> Joshua was speaking to them and telling them what to do. And as soon as the corner of the ark touched the water, the waters parted and it backed up. Uh, all the way back, uh, clear up to the other towns, it said. The water backed up that much. And once again, for a second time, they crossed this major river on dry ground. And not only that, they stop in the middle of this river and they pick up the 12 stones that will be used as the um, <clears throat> altar when they get to the other side. And the message that I ended up getting, I read it this morning didn't really have it. Tom and I talk about it. And in the midst of talking about it is when I got the revelation that what God's showing us in this is, is, is what every one of us need to know. You know, we, we want to put Moses up on this pedal, pe pedestal. Then we want to put Joshua up on this pedestal because they were prophets. They were, they were mighty men of God. They're known throughout history as mighty people of God. And we look at them as though that's the unattainable for us, when the truth is, is that God's no respecter of persons. And so God purposely made this first um, 
uh, this first day, this, I say it's the first day, I didn't research it on the timeline, but this, these first acts that are recorded, God purposely made them to be such grander and so miraculous that there was no doubt in the Israelites' mind that they were following God's man. Uh, God's anointing was on Joshua just as it was with Moses, and um, they had total confidence that they were following the man that God had chosen uh, after all of these things was, uh, was done. And, and applying it to our life today is that we have the anointing of God in us, and he's no respecter of persons. We don't have to sit back and compare ourselves to this one and to that one and to that one. He's in all of us. And the same power that was available to Joshua and was available to Moses is now available to us on the inside of us. And we can accomplish all that God has called us to accomplish. He's already equipped us to accomplish what he has purposed in our hearts to do. He's, every one of us is born with a purpose. Um, a purpose from God. There's a reason why he picked the year you were born, the year I was born, for you to be born during this specific period of time in history. Um, and, and, and we're supposed to fulfill that purpose, and he's already placed his spirit in us uh, as believers to accomplish all that we've uh, been tasked with to do for that mission and that purpose. And um, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see how the transfer of power went from Moses to uh, Joshua and, um, and then to know that that same transfer of power took place with Jesus Christ on the cross and when he was crucified and resurrected and his Holy Spirit came and resided in each one of us. Um, pretty powerful. And then the New Testament reading today is in um, Luke, we're still in Luke, we're in Luke chapter 14, and this is a very deep reading, and I mean, he, this is, he, this is Jesus, and Jesus is talking, and he don't pull no bones about it, it is, there is to be nothing, nothing in your life ahead of me, nothing, nothing, um, and, um, I mean, he even talks about hating your mother and your father. And in today's reading in the English Standard Translation, he talks about hating them, hating your mother and your father and um, your family. And we're not supposed to have anything above him. Now, don't take it out of context. This isn't our license to dishonor the commandment that we honor our father and mother. That, that is not what this is saying at all. It is absolutely divinely aligning what our priorities are supposed to be in our life. And there is nothing to come before God. Nothing. Not our worry about finances. Not our worry about the safety of our children. Not the worry about what college they're going to go to. Not a worry about what uh, job we're going to get. Not a worry about whether I should be a stay-at-home mom. We're not to covet our tools and our equipment and our vehicles more than God. We're not even supposed to covet our children and spend more time thinking about our children than we are God. I mean, he makes it extremely plain that he is a jealous God and that, he, and that we're to love the Lord our God above all else. He's to be number one in our life, and that's what they're reading about today. Um, the kind of the final summary scripture in uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 33 is, so therefore any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. All, renounce all, be willing to give it all up. This is the true die to self that we are crucified with Christ and risen again. It's the reason why we have the physical tradition of water baptism to signify that we've given, when we're buried, when we're, when we're immersed down in that water, we're buried in Christ um, and we're risen again in him and everything else is, it matters not. I mean, what matters to a dead person? What, what matters? I mean, what, what materialistic things are they concerned with when they're dead? What, 
what you, I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying? It's we're, we're, we're crucified in him. We're, we're crucified with him. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which, is, which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough uh, to complete it? And then verse 34, salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile, it is thrown away. He, he who has, has ears to hear, let him hear. And I pray that we hear this morning. Proverbs 12, 27, 28. Whoever is slothful will not toast his... Oh boy, I said that wrong. Whoever is slothful will not roast his game, but the diligent man will get precious wealth. See, he's telling us not to ever, ever give up. The diligent man will, will get precious wealth. And the path of righteousness is life. See, I set before you this day, life and death, blessings and curses. And then he tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 30, choose life. See, this day I set before you, life and death, blessings and curses. And then he gives us the answer to it, choose life. And here it is, and the path of righteousness is life. And in its pathway, there is no death. What do we have to fear? when we don't have to fear death, because here's the truth. We don't ever die. We'll never die. The physical body will pass away, but we never die. What a word to start this terrific Tuesday on. So God bless y'all. Love you.